Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera dan selamat pagi semua. Bagi memperkati latihan kita pada pagi ini, mari kita sama-sama membaca surah Al-Fatihah. Alhamdulillah bersyukur kita kehadrat Ilahi dengan limpah kurnianya dan kita bersama berkumpul pada pagi ini secara maya. Uh, sekali lagi ya Prof, uh, dalam introduction to andragogy in higher education Kali ini bersama dengan yes. sama lagi Profesor uh, Dr. Fauziah binti Abdul Rahim dari Pusat Pengajian Pendidikan Universiti Utara Malaysia Tahun lepas kita dah ada juga ya Prof So tahun ini kita akan uh, mungkin membincangkan uh, topik-topik yang lebih menarik dah dalam uh, andragogy in higher education ya Prof yeah. okay, Terima kasih juga Prof dapat bersama-sama pada kali inilah untuk tahun ini Uh, terima kasih juga kepada semua yang mengikuti latihan ini uh, secara dalam talian. Ya. Sebelum kita teruskan sesi ini, saya ingin maklumkan sedikit perjalin, perjalanan latihan kita pada pagi ini. InsyaAllah kita akan mendengar perkongsian dari uh, Prof. Fauziah sebentar lagi dan sesi soal jawab kita akan buka di pertengahan dan akhir latihan. Semua hadirin dimohon untuk mute audio masing-masing ketika sesi berjalan dan boleh unmute jika ada soalan yang ingin ditanyakan. Jika ada sebarang cadangan, permasalahan atau pandangan boleh kemukakan di ruangan chat. Hadirin yang saya hormati, marilah kita sama-sama berkenalan secara ringkasan dengan profesor kita, uh, kita pada pagi ini iaitu Profesor uh, Fauziah. So, Profesor Fauziah merupakan profesor di Pusat Pengajian Pendidikan UUM seperti yang telah saya bagi tahu tadi. And bidang kepakaran Prof Fauziah uh, adalah Educational uh, Psychology, Mediated Learning, Education, uh, Language Studies juga and then Prof juga adalah teaching English as a second language ya eh, Prof, betul ya? Okay so um, jika dilihat daripada penerbitan ni uh, Prof telah menghasilkan pelbagai uh, ni lah uh, beberapa penerbitan yang sangat uh, banyak lah dalam bidang uh, Prof uh, in education, effective mediation dan beberapa yang lain lah uh, Untuk pengetahuan semua, Prof Fauziah merupakan uh, Pemenang eh, Anugerah Akademik Negara ke-12 Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia Kategori Pengajaran pada tahun 2018 So saya sangat kagum lah untuk pemenang Anugerah Akademik Negara ni And then ada pelbagai anugerah lagi yang Prof Fauziah telah menangi uh, Contohnya seperti Anugerah MOOC uh, tempat kedua University Teaching Learning Center Anugerah Kecemerlangan Khas University, Anugerah Penjawat Cemerlang, Jabatan Khas Program KTP Plan Rolling Kedua dan juga uh, beberapa anugerah medal yang lain lah uh, pada pencipta dan juga ITEX Malaysia. Okay. So tanpa melengahkan masa dengan sukacitanya saya menjemput Profesor Dr. Fauziah bin Abdul Rahim untuk menyampaikan perkongsian yang bertajuk Introduction to Andragogy in Higher Education. Dipersilakan Prof. Terima kasih Dr. Azrina Wani. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi kepada semua. Boleh dengar saya dengan jelas ya? Boleh Prof. Boleh. Uh, Okey. So sebelum saya mula uh, izinkan saya untuk share uh, slide. Okey. Um, Terima kasih kepada pihak UMT kerana menjemput saya untuk memberi sedikit uh, perkongsian tentang tajuk yang telah diberikan iaitu Introduction to Andragogy in Higher Education. Jadi kita um, secara tak langsung um, ki, orang yang kita mengajar di depan kita ni adalah kebanyakannya pelajar-pelajar kita ni termasuk dalam golongan ni lah golongan um, mereka yang dikenali sebagai adult learners. Jadi cara kita mengajar Uh, mungkin berbeza. Jadi saya uh, sebelum saya mula uh, sesi ini saya ingin memohon izin lah supaya kita supaya saya dapat menggunakan kedua-dua bahasa iaitu bahasa Inggeris dan juga bahasa Melayu dan kalau ada apa-apa yang tak clear dan sebagainya jangan duduk senyap sebab uh, saya faham bila kita, bila kita tak faham sesuatu Uh, perkara tu akan sentiasa berada dalam minda kita Bila orang lain duk cakap benda lain uh, Kita tak dengar dah uh, Jadi uh, apa ni, Kalau ada soalan Teruskanlah uh, ni, Tanya je uh, Make it interactive lah ya. Dan sebab saya kira tak Taklah ramai sangat dekat dalam dalam grup ni Jadi uh, saya I don't mind being interactive Okay Right So um, The objective of this uh, little webinar or maybe I consider I consider all webinars as a workshop lah 
um, will be uh, hopefully at the end you'll be able to know what what is adult learners and what is andragogy and why is it important in higher education and um, also to understand the psychology of adult learners in and its implication towards learning and teaching. So the outcome of the of the session the session will be for you to be able to identify the characteristics of adult learners and what is andragogy and apply the principles of adult learning into learning and teaching context while um, discuss the implication of the psychology of adult learners towards learning and teaching. So I understand when, when we do webinars, because I used to become the director of University Teaching Learning Centre, I do understand how we go about doing training, especially online. Uh, some of you might be using mobile phones. Um, so while uh, this appear to be like a one-way interaction, but I do have some uh, interactive uh, activities that I would like you to do. So please uh, make sure that you have another device so that you will have a better learning experience. Okay. Right. So the whole, um, I've been given 10 to 12 to do this. And um, so I'm, I have divided into three parts. So the first part is to give you an idea of why. Why do we need to understand andragogy um, uh, in, in, in our context in higher education? So uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking about inspiring the mind. Inspiring whose mind? Inspiring the mind of our students, right? And, and with it comes challenges and with it comes expectations. And after that only, we will unpack the notion of what is andragogy, what is uh, adult learning, what is difference between pedagogy and andragogy, and so on and so forth. So we'll, we will unpack uh, some notions and, and also I'll be touching about the constructive alignment because when we are doing lessons, when, when, we're, when we are designing our class or assessment, we cannot run away from that. And finally, uh, we live in this not got the new norm pun ya lakut, the new norm of uh, online communication, right? Our lessons, our training, our meeting is all going to be online. So mau tak mau, we have to be to be uh, embark embarking into this world of digital digital digitalization, right? So um so how do we support learning? So but I rasa macam I'm sure all of you, I'm, I'm a lecturer myself, so I do know what, what problems that we have when we do online teaching. Students are in front of our, the computer or they clock in, lepas tu dia pergi makan roti canai ke apa ke, lepas tu dia balik just in time untuk uh, untuk kita nak wrap up. So kalau dia dah nampak dia punya pattern, that's what they're going to do. They know already, oh, buka and then she's going to continue with her lecture. So when she's doing her lecture, I can continue sleeping. So... How do we make sure that um, we are able to engage learning um, in this digital context? So that's that's what we're going to cover this whole day. This whole day, this half day. Right. So inspiring the mind of challenges and expectations. So who are our learners? So um, I think most of you, kalau, uh, kalau I tengok, sebab tak, nak, kalau tengok, tengok gambar je lah kan, ada yang boleh, I boleh nampak tapi ada yang tak, tak, tak tunjuk, uh, tak buka video so I wouldn't know. So I think rata-rata I rasa kebanyakan pensyarah-pensyarah di UMT ni uh, perhaps come from Gen Y. Uh, Gen X ni sikit sangat kot. Uh, Gen X will be like me. Uh, apa ni, uh, dah tunggu hari-hari, tahun-tahun -hari, uh, je nak pencin. Uh, but the Gen Y will be the most, uh, uh, the bigger population in, in the universities right now as lecturers. And what we have in front of us as, as students will be the Generation Z. So, having this generation in, in itself, rasa nampak macam Gen Y dengan Gen Z tu tak adalah beza tak mana. Tapi sebenarnya Gen Z ni, Uh, cara mereka didedahkan kepada teknologi dan cara mereka berfikir uh, dan cara mereka ber, ber, berinteraksi dengan kawan-kawan dia um, ada perbezaan sedikit dengan Generation Y uh, dan of course ada perbezaan yang sangat ketara bagi Generation X dan mereka yang dalam Generation X ni kalau you want to stay relevant in the university having to see that your students are Generation Z you must make sure that you also learn lah mereka ni punya cara cara mereka mencari maklumat, cara mereka berinteraksi supaya kita tak dikenali sebagai noobs, 
kan <laughs> nanti dia pakai kata you're a noob uh, sebab macam baru tak tak tahu apa uh, uh, not not familiar with with uh, something that that Uh, that they are familiar with. So Generation Z ni dia sangat IT savvy. Uh, nak buat macam mana? Sebab Generation X ni kalau zaman-zaman dulu-dulu uh, post-war kita tak ada teknologi sebab kita semua negara masing-masing sedang membangun. Senang, sedang membangunkan negara masing-masing. Dan bila kita nak membangunkan negara masing-masing kita mempunyai uh, pasarana uh, yang belum cukup. Jadi kita nak kena pastikan Uh, uh, hanya segelintir saja yang dapat masuk universiti dan sebagainya lepas tu yang masuk universiti ni pula dia dah tahu dah dia nak dia nak kerja apa sebab kerja tak banyak jadi eh, sorry kerja tak banyak pula kerja banyak orang yang nak bekerja tu tak banyak jadi apa ni bila kita masuk ke dalam universiti tu dia more towards preparing people for the workforce um, and of course pre preparing for for thinking as well lah ya yeah? Um, but when it comes to the 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 the, the lower, uh, I mean, as as we come nearer to the generation Z, we re we realize that the job is scarce. Yeah, peluang uh, pekerjaan dah semakin mengurang. Tapi kita telah uh, tiap tiap tahun kita dapat produce pelajar berbondong bondong lah. Saya rasa daripada uh, universiti masing-masing beribu ribu graduan yang akan akan bergraduat dan uh, di mana pe pekerjaan peluang pekerjaan sangat uh, mencabar bagi mereka. Jadi uh, oleh kerana itu cara kita mengajar dan cara kita memahami mereka uh, harus uh, di apa ni? Uh, dilaksanakan dengan lebih teratur where you design, you design your lesson, you design your assessment in order for them to be able to see beyond the curriculum. They are able to see how they use the knowledge in order to prepare themselves for whatever that's coming, coming, um, you know, uh, in the future, especially after they have completed the program. So that that should be the way in which uh, we look at things. All right. And and don't worry. Um, Uh, I'm going to give you some some, some uh, references of the YouTube. Kononnya nak tunjuk tapi rasa macam tak perlu kuat. You can watch it on your own. That they are um, the as I mentioned just now, the way they interact with people, the way they are influencing people, the way they they like to show their opinion, they like to show their their um, lifestyle, they like to show their perception of things they like to see what what makes them uh, you know how they respond to the certain 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 events all this they like to share uh, whereas the generation x probably will be quite reserved they don't want to share um, with other people you know so that's that's where the generation gap is and be careful if you especially the generation y because you're going to be like me uh, when this this group of people come in Uh, the next is the generation alpha. Yang ni I rasa kat dalam, kalau dalam, kalau kita boleh scan lah dalam womb dia lagi, dia dah belajar slide. Sebab mak dia pun duk belajar slide masa, masa mengandung agaknya. Jadi dia dah acquire those kind of, um, cult, uh, how should I say, environment um, in, in, even in the womb. So they, they kind of, they kind of familiar with, with um, um, all this technology. So, Um, understanding that the world is now at the fingertips. I mean, if you really look at um, how we have expanded, can um, uh, we also have hybrid cars, lah, uh, Google cars that do not need drivers. We are, um, you know, people do do look at the astronom uh, apa as astronomer sahaja eh astronomer pula. Apa panggil tu? Astronaut saja yang pergi ke ke bulan. Sekarang ni siapa-siapa um, pun yang ada duit boleh pergi ke, ke ke bulan and all that. So the world has already changed and the way in which they get information has already changed. And that's why if you look at all the institutions of higher learning, um, the, the the concept of library has also changed. You know, uh, whether or not libraries should have books or do they have online books or um, the spaces that they have is it for for students to to refer uh, books or is it for them to to discuss about what they have learned so those are the kind of questions uh, or uh, the kind of uh, environment that we have changed and especially as i mentioned just now more and more information are 
a place in 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 the internet that the world is basically and literally at your fingertips. Dulu dia bercakap saja the world is at your fingertips tapi dia expect you to baca buku banyak. So sekarang ni um, orang yang tak 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 suka baca pun kalau dia Google saja dia buat guna search engines, dia boleh dapat dah resources yang 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 dia dapat dia dapat uh, dia diperlukan dan uh, definition yang 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 apa secara dasar pun dia dah boleh dapat daripada daripada uh, internet tu. Jadi pelajar kita apabila kita masuk kat dalam kelas kalau kita masih menggunakan cara lama untuk kita mengajar uh, mereka akan sentiasa ada masa untuk nak kalau depa yang cikilah depa akan check lah uh, apa yang you cakap ni betul ke tidak. You know, so those those are the kind of uh, 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 problems that you may face, uh, the interaction that you may face uh, in your classroom. There's even artificial intelligence in certain countries. Tak perlu dah ada pensyarah. Mereka mempunyai clone-clone pensyarah untuk mengajar pelajar-pelajar. Uh, so, so artificial intelligence is already uh, being there to uh, although they don't say to replace um, the lecturers and, and 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 all that but sooner or later when they find um, reasons and they find that um, it's a lot cheaper it's a lot more in terms of quality i can maintain uh, they might go into that field yeah so uh, why do we need to make sure that the, our students are engaged and how do we make sure that we, uh, you know, they, they can become engaged? That's where interactive learning uh, plays a very important role. Interactive learning is more um, about how you can engage your learners in order for them to also tell you what they know or tell you, tell you what how they think. So understanding the learners, the fact that they like to you know, to use Twitter, ke, the, the fact that they like to show to show how they feel and think in, in various social media. Social media can be an instructional tool um, if you know how to um, use it well uh, and embed it in your classroom. So the reason why we have to become, in, uh, we want them to become interactive because bila dia kerja nanti, you know, when they are out in the, in the workforce, uh, they cannot run away from from interacting with people, uh, even if there's you know their work is back end, kahapoka they call it, but you still you still have to you know interact with with people and and you still need to know how to solve problems collaboratively. So how do we ensure collaboration can still occur, although um, you know they are in their separate separate, um, apa tu? Uh, contacts in their separate uh, houses and all that and and the worst part of it is uh, we pray to God that um, really we hope that our students will not feel bored in our classroom um, that's 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 constantly I think uh, we need to also consider in order for us not to shock sendiri lah. Kadang-kadang kita shock sendiri, kita rasa macam, oh, macam best je I punya lesson. Tapi sebenarnya student suruh tidur lah dekat dalam, dekat dekat belakang. Sorry lah, bila I cakap bahasa Melayu, I tend to use uh, the kedahan uh, dialect, although I'm not a kedahan. Prof, ke saya je yang uh, putus dengan Prof ni? Semua orang uh, tak tak dapat dengar Prof ke? Tengok last connection. Semua juga putus. Tengok last connection. Prof, okay kita tunggu dulu. Mungkin connection Prof di sana.
Uh, Prof, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Prof terputus sekejap tadi. Kita tak dengar suara Prof. Ah, uh, Itulah sebab dia dah tunjuk dekat sini yang uh, I'm having internet internet uh, connection problem. Okay. okay. Sebab tu I stop sharing sekejap tadi oh. ni ya. Uh, when I realise that you all uh, yeah, are not responding. <laughs> Okay, tak apa. I will, I will keep, uh, keep respond. I mean, asking questions. Okay. So coming back to what, or what I was saying, um, trying not to make sure that uh, we we have to try our very best to make sure that our class is engaging, although it is online. So what, what do we need to do in when we're discussing about twenty first century and because of the challenges, as I mentioned just now, um, you know, when they it's difficult for them to get, to get jobs and all that. So what kind of, what kind of graduates and what kind of if I can use the word product, what kind of um, human capital? Um, macam itulah. Human capital pun orang tak suka uh, perkataan itu juga. Tak apalah. What, what kind of graduates that you would want to 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 produce um, who will become, you know, uh, better citizens? So, in uh, when you're talking about education in 21st century, uh, kita, apa yang, yang perlu kita tekankan ialah transformation of knowledge. Maksudnya, kita kena te tengok pelajar kita masa dia masuk apa di mana mereka dan di, uh, memahami uh, syllabus kita tu supaya kita boleh tahu bahawa di mana kita nak bawa mereka pergi maksudnya from from one end to the other end and we have to believe that everybody has the capacity to learn when you believe that everybody has the capacity to learn different people have different capacities just like just like a car Uh, setengah ada 1.5 cc setengah 2.0 cc you know so they will get to the destination eventually but some people might get to the destination faster compared to other people so expanding one's capacity to learn um, is crucial as a lecturer uh, and we need to know what kind of um, activities and what kind of assessment what kind of project what kind of um uh, tasks that will help them to expand their um that that capacity and the kind of um the way in which we we look at education is not re it should not be just <coughs> retrospective retrospective ni maksudnya macam sekarang ni yang kita selalu buat kita ajar 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 ajar, ajar pelajar kita selama 14 minggu lepas tu kita bagi exam kita nak tengok selama 14 minggu tu sejauh mana pelajar kita dapat dapat Uh, ingat, faham apa yang kita ajar. Itu kita panggil retrospective orientation. Retrospective sebab dia retro. Dia 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 ingat balik, dia ingat semula apa yang dia belajar sebelum ni. Prospective orientation, uh, you need to also now because of the 21st century and its challenges and all that and understanding uh, the kind of learn adult learners that we are producing uh, for the future. <coughs> Um, we need to also talk about or consider prospective orientation. Prospective orientation ni, kalau boleh kita dedahkan kepada mereka masalah-masalah uh, yang mungkin belum ada lagi jalan penyelesaiannya. Maksudnya kadang-kadang mungkin kita pun tak ada jalan penyelesaian. Uh, kita mengajar marine, marine apa? Marine biology misal kata, if I'm using UMT as an as an example. But excuse me because I'm not a marine biologist so I might be saying something Entah apa -apa, kan? But um, assuming that you're teaching marine biology, uh, the theory says um, certain animals or certain, you know, certain um, animals in the ocean to behave certain way. But because of the because of the global warming and the kind of toxic and people are sending into the ocean and all that, so it has changed the ecosystem of the of the um apa ni, fishery and and everything all the microbes and organism 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 yang ada dekat dalam dalam the ocean tu um, benda tu you pun tak tak ada dia punya jalan penyelesaian but you are allowing your students to take part in making meaning you know and solving the problem that is what we call prospective orientation and that is actually will make your student become dia macam outshine other students yang normal, yang hanya belajar retrospectively ni. Because your students can do one thing ahead uh, compared to other people yang hanya belajar teori yang memang dah ada. Uh, sekarang ni dia ni uh, dengan penemuan dia, dengan apa yang dia dapat, dia dapat um, apa ni, uh, um, lalui pengalaman dia tu, dia dapat mem membantu diri dia develop confidence and contribute 
kepada uh, you know contribute to the knowledge so when we're talking about um, prospective orientation the kind of teaching will be <coughs> will be a bit different where you must definitely know your content maksudnya syllabus tu memang you kena khadam lah tak boleh suatu ketua jabatan kalau ada yang ada dekat dalam ni janganlah bagi dekat you punya pensyarah-pensyarah uh, uh, kursus baru lagi tiga hari sebelum uh, semester bermula uh, sebab memang pensyarah tu akan sama je dia punya level sama sahaja dengan pelajar-pelajar dia sebab dia pun terkial-kial nak nak apa nak 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 get uh, him or herself ready for the for the syllabus jadi you have to give them like one or two two semesters uh, that will be ideal lah one to two semesters in advance so that they have ample time to to get themselves ready before they actually teach and they can plan so they need to make sure that their knowledge of the content is a plus plus then the other thing is the knowledge of how to mediate learning maksudnya kita kena belajar cara untuk kita membantu pelajar kita mendapat jawapan tanpa kita memberi jawapan uh, yang tu yang tu adalah skill tu. The, there's a skill which is not going to be covered in this in this webinar so that's how how do we mediate our students so that they become thinkers in order for you to do that you have to ask questions or probe them prompt them in order for them to to continue thinking you know and not just receiving just sali nota and receiving the the jawapan so the kind of learning is a learning that is constructive in nature so students are constructing the the knowledge they are learning from each other so individual differences is going to take effect in your classroom because different people have different different experiences and they share and that's why collaborative learning is is important collaborative tasks uh, is important um and when they feed you with those information that's how it will influence you pula in a dialectical way to future teaching future teaching maksudnya whatever that they say will in influence what how you are going to interact how you are going to approach your teaching in co-constructing knowledge together so can you imagine macam tadi yang i bagi kat you contoh um where you also don't know what's the what's the you know you don't know yet so both of you are actually or both of you and the students are actually trying to see to make to make um meaning how to solve the problem then what they are learning from you is not getting the answer what they are learning from you is the skill of getting the answer faham eh uh, bukan dia nampak you sebagai the all knower dia nampak you sebagai orang yang mempunyai pengalaman untuk uh, mencari uh, jalan penyelesaiannya uh, kepada satu-satu masalah alright so they're learning from you the skills of problem solving and skills of problem solving ni walaupun kita ada learning cluster problem solving uh, which is now in cognitive um, jarang orang mengajar cara-cara skill untuk nak nak apa nak nak selesaikan masalah kita masih ke arah mencari jawapan kepada soalan yang kita telah berikan ataupun problem yang telah kita utarakan kepada pelajar kita so the next the, uh, so as a teacher uh, you your constant constant uh, uh, task is actually to reflect how you teach reflect what's going on in the classroom so that's reflect, re reflection in action and reflect off action um in order for you to you know to to help them to also learn better uh, that's what so when they are able to solve problems that that they ha that has not been solved before that's what we call prospective learning um and that will give them that trajectory of confidence um that that is needed okay and as i said just now what we want is to create uh, critical thinkers because if they're not critical think if they're not critical they tend to become followers. Now, if Malaysia continuously produce graduates who are followers, then we will then develop leaders who are followers. And it's going to be difficult for our country to become better. So in order for our country to become better, as in truly a developed, a developed country, we need to produce critical thinkers so that the graduates become thinkers themselves when they become leaders, they are thinking leaders who will make a difference to the to the country. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Um, so that's the reason why we have to focus on on all this aspect that our students are 
uh, potential, they have the, the, the capacity to learn, and they have the capacity to become critical thinkers. Now, we need to make sure that we are able to, to in, infuse all these um, skills, all this um, um, uh, strategies in our lesson as well as in our assessment. And what we want to do is not just to stimulate one side of the brain. Yang, yang memory itu is one side of the brain. But what we want is for them to solve problems yang, yang saya kata tadi itu in, in very creative ways. When they, in, in order for them to do that, they need to become critical thinkers. So you are stimulating both left and left and right brains. And that will make them um, um, really remember lah you punya course but sekarang ni bila kita stimulate just one side of the brain that's why sometimes students bila dia dah dia dah ambil dah semester satu kursus as, uh, prasyarat tu bila masuk dekat semester tiga sepatutnya yang ada kursus ini ada prasyarat yang masa dia pun ambil semester satu tanya dekat mereka what is the, what is it that they have learned in semester one semua go like krik 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 semua tak ingat lah because they were not stimulated in terms of the left and the right brain they were just asked to memorize when you're asking students to memorize, yang ini yang, yang saya, saya rasa yang tadi um, uh, yang disebut kalau last year I came to to talk about uh, to UMT uh, will probably be about learning approaches. So this is what we call surface learning. Bila surface learning, habis saja semester, dia akan delete. Delete file-file tu. Sebab dia nak letak file baru kat dalam dalam otak je. Yang ini kita panggil theory of information processing. Uh, information processing. Ada teori tentang cognitive level cognitive function kita ni, yang kita panggil sebagai information processing theory. So what they do is, be, because dia tak delve, dia tak, dia tak, dia tak mendalami apa yang dia, dia belajar, dia hanya belajar secara kasar sahaja dari mana dia, dia menghafal dan mungkin menghafal tu hanya, belum lagi ke sampai ke tahap dia menghafal sampai dia faham. Kan? Kita kadang-kadang, kita nak dia orang faham supaya bila dia hafal, dia dapat hafal dan faham. Bila dia hafal dan faham, dia akan ingat. Tapi kalau dia hafal sahaja tanpa dia faham, uh, habis sahaja semester, lupa. Sebab dia, brain dia, dia nak pergi letak lagi file baru. So, that's how our brain is. Yeah, Information processing theory says that our brain is just like the computer. Okay, so what our students have gone through is that they have gone through school, they have gone through pre-university and they come to, to see us in the university. When they were in school, uh, the way in which they learn was a bit different because school tend to become very pedagogical oriented di mana guru tu banyak membimbing pelajar banyak memberi memberi contoh-contoh kepada pelajar cara untuk menyelesaikan masalah rather than helping the, the uh, or getting the pelajar, uh, pelajar to to solve the problem itu itu konteks di Malaysia eh. tapi kalau konteks di luar negara uh, um, i know i've been to united kingdom I've, I've seen how they how they um, do teaching. Sekolah rendah lagi dah selesai masalah. Uh, jangan ceritalah sekolah menengah ni. So even in the primary school, they were already solving problems. But in our in our context, Alhamdulillah, as we came to the year of 20, when we had our Malaysian Education Blueprint, uh, uh, MEB tu, Kita dah nampak dah ada bibit-bibit untuk um, uh, um, apa ni, pentaksiran berasaskan sekolah, guru diminta untuk uh, buat apa ni, uh, projek bersama-sama dengan pelajar. So that's where um, learning has been different a little bit lah. Pelajar-pelajar uh, kalau bandingkan zaman dulu-dulu, pelajar-pelajar senyap je tak berani nak tanya soalan. Sekarang pelajar-pelajar kita um, nampaklah juga keberanian dia untuk nak bertanya soalan adalah dia kalau compare dengan zaman dulu-dulu. So the adaptation adaptation to learning and acquisition of knowledge is very guided in nature where the teacher is actually guiding them. When they come to the pre-university, it doesn't matter whether they per masuk sekolah STPM ke, matriculasi ke, um, diploma ke, that is considered as the transitional process where they receive minimal guidance, but I'm not sure about STPM because I know STPM, you tend to have the same teachers teaching you when you were in Form 4, Form 5. So chances are they might still be guiding guiding you more than empowering you or asking you to take ownership of your learning. Tapi Alhamdulillah, because of the nature of the assessment that is required by uh, uh, um, in their 
apa uh, in in the assignment so that assignment is actually helping them to to become empowered become uh, taking ownership and and help helping them to do some form of decision making when they do the problem solving whereas in in, in the university what we need to do now is to emancipate the knowledge so that they have the trajectory of learning trajectory of learning macam saya kata tadi lah kalau dia dapat selesaikan satu masalah yang yang baru uh, that will be definitely a trajectory of learning um, um, kalau dia dapat menyelesaikan uh, ataupun buat satu-satu projek yang dia dia design sendiri dia kendali sendiri so that that will give them the empowerment and and the ownership and the sense of independence and autonomy um, and of course still informed decision because now they, they get when they do projects they have to cal collect data from the data they analyze the data from the from the analysis of the data they they give solutions and suggestions to to solve the, the problem so that's what we call informed decision informed decision dia dilatih di, di, di dalam universiti untuk membuat keputusan-keputusan uh, berasaskan kepada fakta ataupun data all right, so that's what we call informed decision. And what we want is actually to create the thinking being to prepare them with um, higher education. Kita selalu dengar kan, higher education 4.0 lah, IR 4.0 lah. Sebenarnya kita nak kena get ready, get them ready for IR 5.0 or beyond. Uh, we can no longer talk about 4.0 because 4.0 tu sepatutnya berlaku 10 tahun yang dulu. Kita ni baru duduk dengar 4.0, 4.0. So, some some countries have already been talking about IR 5.0. But if you focus on the thinking being, uh, datanglah IR apa pun, they will be able to adapt because they are thinkers. They can adapt very well to, um, to the to the constant changes that, that's happening. But if you create those yang can memorize well, Ah, mereka ni susah lah nak adapt sebab mereka rasa macam Allah hari tu baru je dok faham pasal benda ni nak kena memorize benda ni pula. So they will be very stressful because they don't see they don't see learning as challenging. They see learning as stressful. Okay, but if they see learning as challenging because it's challenge, they feel that it's fun. Then then you uh, apa ni berjaya lah nak menghasilkan orang yang thinking being ni, yang dia datanglah uh, challenge macam mana pun, dia rasa macam seronok. Nah, sebab tu kita nak kena nak kena pastikan daripada semester satu lagi, kita dah ada challenge, a little bit of challenge in our in our lesson so that kita dah mendidik pelajar-pelajar kita to become thinking being. And we have to understand our learners ni uh, can be varied. Yeah? Uh, I think most of you are teaching undergraduate, right? Ada tak yang ajar postgraduate dekat dalam dalam group ni sekarang? Undergrad. Ah, kebanyakan yang undergrad. Okay. Kalau kebanyakan yang undergrad, then uh, chances are your students will be in this two two apa ni stages je lah. Early adulthood uh, dengan yang adulthood. Early adulthood tu will be like 18, 19. Uh, young adulthood tu dah jadi 20, 21, 22, 23. That will be... Uh, a young adulthood already. But if you're teaching postgraduate, you will also have the middle adulthood. Uh, Maaf, um, Mencela. Yeah. Uh, kalau macam yang master by research tu, consider kita ajar dia juga ke? Uh, skills kan? Kita akan ajar dekat dia what, master by research. Dia akan buat project, right? Yeah. Masa kita buat supervision kita, dia akan present apa yang dia dah dapat tu, kita akan selalu, apa yang kita buat? Kita tanya soalan kan? Ha, ya, yeah. yeah, normally macam tu lah. Ah, jadi bila kita tanya soalan, we are also teaching them the skills of uh, understanding understanding their 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 work, what they have done and hmm. asking okay. them to think what they need to do next, right? So, adalah kot dalam ni. Macam saya, saya memang ada student master under my supervision lah. Uh, how old are they? Young? Or? Uh, ada yang, ada yang dah bekerja tetap. Not hmm. really young, macam middle of the 30s pun ada. Okay. 
All right. Yeah. So the, the apa ni middle 30 well depending on what what which 30 lah kalau dia macam 35 uh, 35 and below dia boleh masuk dalam dalam um, early early um, I'm sorry young adulthood tu. But uh, middle adulthood tu will be about 40 and above. That will be considered as middle adulthood. Uh, and some of us yang kita mengajar PhD and all that they could be about 40 45 you know um doing their PhD and some of them 60 pun ada uh, doing their PhD so you cannot treat them the same as um you know how we teach our undergraduates because the way in which they come with loads and loads of um experience jadi kalau kita tengok pelajar apa yang saya nak cuba cuba uh, sampaikan dekat sini ialah Uh, bila pelajar kita masuk, walaupun dia transitional stage kan, walaupun umur dia 18 tahun Dia ada 18 tahun pengalaman tentang dunia dia You know um, um, Mungkin dia tak tahu terminologi yang you ajar Kalau you nak ajar microbiology tu dia tak tahu dia terminologi Setakat ikan tu semua tu dia tahu You know, different different types of ikan dia tahu uh, You know, the different different types of air ke Air pasang, air surut, so, semua tu dia, dia, dia faham So, how do we tap those kind of experiences? You know, um, uh, in order to use the, those experiences In order for us to introduce the terminology Sama juga yang middle adulthood Kalau middle adulthood 40 tahun, 45 tahun dah Dia ada 45 tahun punya pengalaman And the best part of it is Some of them um, are actually working in the kalau dia nak buat PhD in marine biology definitely dia kerja dekat jabatan perikanan betul tak so they they not only have the the experiences in terms of knowledge but they also have the practical know-how uh, experiences so how do we tap all this um when we are dealing with our students that's 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 the questions lah yang kita kita uh, perlu faham bahawa mereka tidak datang kosong they're not they don't come in not clever they come in with some experiences we need to know what they know we, and we need to know to be sure sebab tu kita kena faham syllabus tu we need to be sure where we want to go as in to achieve the syllabus how do we get them there and how do we get them there uh, it's through When, when you understand the punya the punya features as adult learners tap those features so that while they are doing the assignment or the task or the activities they are also being taught to become autonomous they are uh, also being trained to become thinkers okay okay uh, shall we do this um either you scan Or you just tulis www.menti.com And they will ask you for the code You That's the code 47240742 You should be able to get the The apa tu? I'm trying to Yeah. Oh, thank you, Dr. Azrina Wani. I wanted to write it down. You've you've beat beat me to it. Okay, that's it. www.menti.com. Can you see the? Can you can you can you open it? Boleh. Boleh boleh. Okay. So three words to describe a learner. As a teacher, what kind of learners do you have in your classroom? So far, seorang je yang yang tulis. Tengah berfikir. Faham, faham.
And it's usually like that, right? Uh, kita tak pernah stop to think about our learners. We just come in and teach, 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 teach. Um, so I hope this session will make you become more um, sensitive towards, hmm, what kind of learners do we have? Got 108 participants, but we've just got 13 people, 17, okay, 17 people signing in. <laughs> Prof, jika saya nak tanya soalan, sambil-sambil kita menunggu kawan-kawan uh, respon, boleh ke? Boleh. Ah, ya macam tadi yang Prof kata ada three stages tadi kan Macam mana kita tentukan yang three stages tu By, uh, by umur ataupun memang mengikut kematangan Sometimes kita boleh tengok kan macam umur yang lebih kurang sama Ada yang matang, ada yang kurang matang So macam mana kita tentukan tu Ah, Kalau dalam psikologi dia perlu tertentukan dengan umur Tapi sebenarnya uh, umur and tahap kematangan Because um, umur tu is just like Kurata is umur lah tapi you tak, tak boleh guna umur tu sahaja sebagai dia punya dia punya faktor sebab as you mentioned just now different people have different experiences and cognitive function so they might have uh, they, some might might be a little bit slower and some might be a little bit faster hmm. tapi secara dasarnya it will be the uh, umur lah kan uh, boleh kalau macam early adulthood ni uh, dia umur berapa lebih kurang prof yang macam early daripada berapa range dia? Kalau kalau transition, it will be between 17, it depends. Kalau dekat barat, 17 tu dia dah consider sebagai adulthood because mereka habis mengaji 16 tahun. Okay. Kita 17, um, macam contoh mereka 17 tahun dah buat A-levels. Kita 17 hmm. tahun baru nak ambil SPM. SPM, betul. Uh, A-levels uh, A levels kita uh, umur 18-19, betul tak? Betul. Okay. Mereka by 18 tu dah settle dah. Maksudnya 17 tu dia dapat sit for mereka punya A-levels. 18 tu dia dapat masuk universiti. Jadi boleh kerana tu, uh, range dia will be between 17 until uh, 20. And then 20 onwards, that will be the transitional stage lah. Mereka panggil okay. transitional stage because um, that is, apa orang kata tu? Um, transisi antara pers alam persekolahan kepada alam universiti. You know? Dewasa. Uh -huh. uh, jadi bila universiti tu dia dia lain lah kan Dia nak kena jaga diri dia sendiri and all that So uh, sepatutnya uh, apa ni Dia punya ni berbeza lah Okay then then it will be the early uh, The young adulthood Young adulthood will be from uh, 20-ish Until 33 33-34-35 depending lah again uh, That will be the range of a young adulthood 35 hmm. onwards, dia dah transition antara uh, adult, young adulthood kepada middle adulthood. Okay. Tapi benda-benda ni, uh, age ni, dia sentiasa berubah-ubah sebab uh, do you realise tak baru-baru ni yang dia kata umur 80 tahun tu pun consider eh, 60 ke? 60 tahun consider sebagai young. So, <laughs> dia, ter, dia terpulang kepada uh, cara, cara apa ni, kehidupan kita. Kalau rata-rata uh -huh. uh, uh, apa ni uh, our life expectancy is longer then dia punya uh, length of dia punya stages tu pun akan dipanjangkan lah. Panjang, betul? Hmm. So, it depends on the punya the length lah. The length of the niat, dia punya ni. Okay. Um, thank you for, for those who have actually sent. So, I'm just going to ask you to do this one as well. Yang ni, what I'm going to ask you to do is to 
Ya, yeah. if you click on that, there will, there's there are some questions. For those yang dah siap tadi ni, uh, can you answer those questions? And answer to answer those questions truthfully, honestly. Maksudnya, maksudnya uh, secara jujur lah. And then I'm going to tell you what what those what this those things are. Once you have uh, for those yang dah siap the yang jawab ni yang learning style ni, write down what is your learning style ataupun screenshot dia punya dia punya dia punya detail tu supaya you boleh simpan lah. But I want you to remember what your what your learning style is because I'm going to ask you to to share it afterwards. So in the meantime, again, if you if you all want to ask questions, please do. Okay. Um, maybe I will stop sharing a bit and then look at. Tula. Hmm. I'll give you some time to. Sebab baru sepuluh orang je yang jawab. Uh, you only uh, uh, kat mana ni sekarang ni? Dah 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 jawab ke belum? Mine done. You're done. Okay. Thank you, Isma. The rest, uh, the, uh, apa ni, uh, jangan tulis dekat dalam chat lah. You, 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 you jawab dekat dalam mentimeter tu. Sebab dalam mentimeter tu saya letak, uh, apa, saya letakkan dia punya soalan. Uh, you letak lah sebab what type of learner are you, uh, you, you tulis dekat situ. Boleh? Okay, for those who have done, thank you very much. For those who haven't, can you do that quickly? But I'm afraid if I if I go to the next um, page too, you all tak nak jawab dah. All right. So, hang on a minute. How many people have answered? Right. So, if I were to, I'll just share with you my Google Chrome. Okay. So, um, looking at this, um, to the question of what type of learner are you, most of you are visual, followed by kinesthetic and auditory. So, th that's kind of, that's kind of um, pretty normal that we have kinesthetic, kinesthetic juga sebab most of your programs are very hands-on based program, kan? Kalau dia macam law ke apa ke, chances are banyak auditory lah. Uh, but because uh, the, the nature of the programs, which also require the nature of the lecturers and all that, so chances are you probably will have more of the kinesthetic and visual. And I'm sure some of you will ask me questions like, I, I'm like 50-50 lah, visual punya, kinesthetic punya. And yang tu pun normal. Uh, not, not many people have like pure visual or pure kinesthetic. Usually they will have... Uh, they will have a combination, but you, uh, to decide, you take the one that's most. But uh, having said that, there are some people yang 50-50, visual pun uh, ya, yeah, uh, kinesthetic pun ya. Yeah. Uh, so, tak apalah untuk orang-orang yang macam tu, uh, apa ni, uh, understand that you can blend well lah, visual pun boleh, uh, kinesthetic pun boleh. Now, why is this important? Can anyone shout to me? Why is this important? What do we need to know about, about the learner? To design a proper learning strategy. Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean by to, prepare, uh, to, to, to design proper learning strategy? Uh, uh, supaya kita tahu bagaimana nak, nak cater dia punya needs lah. Hmm. Macam Maksudnya, mana macam dia. Betul. Jadi kalau kalaulah kalaulah macam sekarang ni dalam kelas you ada 31 orang dan dia punya dia punya uh, apa dia punya orang kata tu uh, demografi dia macam ni lah. Uh, there will be more most of them are visual, some of them are kinesthetic and some of them are auditory. How are you going to plan your class? What kind of activities would you would you want to do with your class? Hmm. Hmm. Any idea? Okay, let me ask the visual learners. 
Um, what stimulates you to learn? Yang 23 orang ni. What stimulates you to learn? Does colour, 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 is colour important? Yes. Okay, mm. colour is important. Lagi? Pictures? Uh, nice pictures? Is it important? Yes. Yes, because you're visual kan? <laughs> Jadi, uh, bila you nak bagi dekat mereka, um, apa ni, uh, bila kita... Kennedy is asking me why are the questions so 1980s? I don't know lah. Maybe somebody 1980s designed the the question. Okay. Um. And plus, those are the kind of questions that, for them to determine the different types of learners, right? Well, what I'm trying to say here is, kalau dia visual, uh, cara kita nak bagi syllabus kita pun dia dah tak boleh nak ba nak bagi syllabus yang words text saja. Dia tak macam tak menarik Dia kena ada colour-colour sikit Kena ada gambar sikit So that people macam hmm, Macam shock je lah nak baca Kalau tidak dia rasa macam It's too boring um, And some people because of the visual They might they might like to see To see the design Rather than uh, you know like So if you have infographics Or you have You have uh, you ask them to do mind map uh, Kalau dia suka dia buat mind map Memang dia pun suka Sebab they they like to see it, um, apa ni, uh, apa ni, um, in a visual form, okay? Uh, what else? If it's, if it's auditory? Katalah dalam kelas unit terbalik, uh, 23 people are actually auditory and the rest are, are visual and kinesthetic. Maksudnya most of them are actually auditory. So yeah, correct, Isma. You can actually use songs, or you can actually use um. You that means they like to listen. They like to listen to you um talking. So you can actually instead of doing your class lecture, you do a podcast, so that they can actually listen to you repeating your lecture, uh, in a podcast form. Okay. <clears throat> Ah, that's interesting. I never thought about stories. Maybe if you want to talk about, you want to introduce to them the terminologies and you want to use stories, that's that's brilliant, you know. Um, or uh, get them to do activities and relate to all these things. Maksudnya, they are the ones who are going to do the, the video. They are the ones who are going to turn the songs into into into, you know, in explaining certain concepts. So, It, it's either you guna guna yang tu sebagai asas dia or you guna depa punya learning style tu sebagai cara depa nak persembahkan and that will be very very interesting because you are actually learning from each other and you will be able to see the creativity of your students in in various in various form and that will also give you a different different perspective about what your students can and cannot do Okay, so Hafiza is saying that her teaching slides are black and white only, uh, maybe because I'm auditory. <laughs> yeah, so well, that's why I say um, uh, in this context, when you're preparing your slides and all that, you have to consider your learners so that they will become engaged when you're providing the slides, if it's only slides. But if you're using slides, you know, just slides, then, then that, um, you know, sekali sekala je you nak guna slides, then that's fine. But uh, be careful, yeah. Uh, the other thing that you need to be careful is to also learn to know your learners. If there are learn in your in your classroom, if there are learners who are dyslexic, yang yang suffer dyslexia, dyslexia is not um apa ni? It's not really a learning problem. Maksudnya, they they can become you know they can do very well in in the university and all that. Uh, the only thing is sometimes. The words, they get, um, macam the words is like flying, um, especially if the background tu tak kena. So, people who have, who are dyslexic, they don't like, you, you have to make sure that the background is always cream. They become white. Because white dengan black, uh, contrast sangat-sangat. Uh, yang ni, I pun tak tanya sama ada you all ni ada dyslexia, dyslexia ke, uh, apa ni, dalam group ni kan. But usually, they will have to make sure that the background is a bit creamy lah, cream, cream. Uh, then, then, then they will be able to see the text better. So, that will be the visual, the auditory. Kinesthetic? 
What about kinesthetic? Katalah 23 of your students are kinesthetic. The rest are all visual and auditory. What would you do? Yep, you will do a, lo a, a lot more of the hands-on. It's not that you langsung tak boleh guna slides. Boleh. Tapi, uh, slides kejap je. Lepas tu, okay, now to get them, get their hands dirty. You know, exploring exploring what you have just discussed and break it into chunks so that they will they will know they will understand um, bit by bit. Uh, yeah, that's where the practical comes in. So I'm not, uh, and I'm not saying that you have to follow just your students. I'm, I'm trying to tell you that because your classroom is large and chances are you will get various types of students, those who are visual, auditory, kinesthetic, you can dapatnya satu class tu yang semua visual, very unlikely. Your way of approaching uh, the lesson must also be varied. The activities that you want your students to do must also be varied so that you are tackling all kinds of students yang ada dekat dalam classroom gitu. And, um, and I'm giving you an, uh, 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 apa orang kata tu, question yang yang very, very generic, yang hanya untuk nak lihat sama ada dia punya visual, auditory, or kinesthetic. Learning style ni sebenarnya ada banyak lagi apa ni dia punya dia punya instrument yang boleh nak tengok uh, the type of learners but this one will do and this one is enough for you to um you know to get have a gauge of who your students are what kind of students and what how are you going to plan your lesson in order to cater to to the different types of students right let's look at the I'll get back to the question. Yes, good job. Yeah, okay. Um, Prof, Prof ada cakap dengan kita ke? Suara, suara mute. <laughs> Ayah. Okay, I'll repeat it. Eh? I shall repeat. Um, I do hope that you don't have ADHD students because if you have ADHD students in um in the tertiary level where you will have 120 students in your classroom, it's not ideal for your ADHD student. So the minute you know that there is an ADHD student memang, memang proven by medical that they are ADHD, but maybe mild versions, but kalau dia tak mild version, chances are dia susah nak, hand, susah nak sampai ke tahap uh, apa ni, university. Um, then you will need a buddy. Kalau macam dekat, uh, dekat overseas, what they have is they have a buddy, buddy system where Macam dyslexia tadi tu pun dia akan ada body system yang mana yang blind, yang tak boleh jalan, yang paraplegic, so semua tu their brains are doing well. It's just that their body, their 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 um, anatomy yang lain tu je yang tak boleh nak nak bergerak. So they will have body. This body is paid by the I don't know how. I can't remember. I mean, they they punya ada lah. They punya syarat syarat dia dia kena go through some training and all that. So they are going to become uh, learning bodies for the student. Uh, either to help them to, macam ADHD ni, dia kena control, you have to control them to repeat the instruction. Sebab dia senang agitated, dia senang, dia senang, um, apa, distracted uh, by other things. Sebab tu dia kata attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Attention deficit means dia susah nak pay attention. Hyperactivity means dia tak boleh duduk diam. So, bila dia tak boleh nak 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 pay attention, uh, chances are dia akan fidget lah. Bila dia akan fidget, dia akan kacau orang lain. Sebab sebab tu kita kena ada body system. Kalau macam dekat, dekat luar negara, kalau dekat sekolah, they will have another special special teacher to sit beside the ADHD student to repeat what the what the instruction given by the teacher. Sebab kalau kita bagi instruction, selalunya kita kata, okay, everybody sit in groups of four. I want you to do this, 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 this. Kalau ADHD, they can everybody find a partner okay the find a partner find another partner find another partner find find you know you find three friends 
So dia dah find three friends. Okay, now you sit in a group. Your your instruction tu kena satu, satu, satu kepada dia. Sebab tu kita kena ada, kena ada body system lah. Uh, so I do hope dekat uh, UMT ni tak ada. Kalau ada, uh, you can uh, speak to the HEPA in order to make sure that there's a program where the body system can help the students. And you have to make sure that you also be aware lah, of such such uh, problem. Um, Nor Ismail is asking, do we have any borang or activity to detect those behavior? I've just given you the activity, right? Although somebody said it's a 1980s question. So that 1980s question can give you some basic fundamental understanding of what kind of uh, uh, learning style of your students. So feel free to to use that and uh, let me give you the link again where is it now yep that's the one Alamak. yeah okay um so the three words um of that you you mentioned about your students were well, most of you said that your students are passive. Now, understanding your students are passive is good because that shows that you are alert about your students, you know, you're very clear. But how do you change your passive students into uh, an interactive one? Uh, macam dulu, masa saya, uh, I remember when my children were very young and they had to go to school dekat, dekat UK, the teacher, kita dekat sini seronok lah kalau anak-anak kita ni jenis senyap, shy, tak, tak mau cakap banyak. So, Cikgu-cikgu uh, akan rasa sayang sangat kat budak-budak ni Sebab mereka ni uh, macam Orang tak tahu pun mereka exist kat dalam kelas Sebab senyap Tapi kat negara barat uh, That is a signal of shy Shy students are signals that they will Not do well in academic achievement Because uh, Mereka rasa macam orang yang shy ni They will not tell they will be afraid, they have low self-esteem, they have low self-concept, they don't want to sh outshine other people, they don't want to tell people what they know, so they're going to be very quiet. Because they're very quiet, they tend to become uh, aloof. When they become aloof, they don't concentrate. When they don't concentrate, they don't get their, the, the, the information that they're getting, so they will not do well in their, in their academic achievement. So that's why they want to run away from shy and passive and all that and make them become more interactive confident so secara depa ialah mula-mula dia depa depa buat depa uh, cari orang yang antara budak-budak kawan-kawan -budak, uh, dia orang tu yang body system ni lah where one person will be in charge of the the girl or the boy and introduce uh, depa punya apa ni uh, uh, you know the environment and all that so uh, macam berkawan lah berkawan then after after a while then they will uh, the, the teacher will will see you know, will monitor sama ada dia dah mula berkawan ke tidak ataupun dia dah uh, being accepted beyond that body. Maksudnya, from that body, dia dah mula ada ramai-ramai kawan-kawan-kawan. Uh, lepas tu, dia akan, dia akan, uh, apa ni, bagi pula uh, mereka ni duduk dekat dalam grup untuk mereka buat aktiviti. Lepas tu, bila dalam aktiviti, take turns pula siapa yang akan present. Uh, yang dia punya, yang the person yang hot shy ni will be the last so that they gain confidence as they see all their all his or her friends uh, presenting and my daughter was really really shy to the extent because she didn't get the dia tak the the language that was one of the reasons so but what, what the teacher did was it's like the whole school was trying to help her uh, she moved from somebody who doesn't want to talk to people to when there was a concert, a play, she became the lead, the lead uh, actress. And I kena marah dengan dia punya, dia punya principal, head teacher dia tu sebab, sebab saya masa tu tengah sibuk dengan dia punya, apa ni, uh, PhD and I said I cannot come for the concert and she just snapped at me. You know, your work is your work but you have, when it comes to your children, you have to make sure that you're there. So, and I am going to make sure that you are there. So, I terpaksa lah bagi tahu dekat my supervisor, I have to go and see my my child's concert because if not, the head teacher is going to scold me. So, apa ni, pergi uh, dengar the, uh, uh, the concert and I can actually see the head teacher turning to look at the belakang to see whether I'm around or not. Sampai I kena angkat tangan to say, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. Um, and what she was trying to show me is that, do you remember the child who didn't, who didn't like to make friends and look at what she is she's very proud of you know 
um, saying all those lines and she make an effort to remember to 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 remember those lines and and do well so she is turning um the child from being shy to you know from being passive to active shy to confident and it's and she also showed me uh, that when my child becomes confident she loves going to school she loves learning she because the trajectory of her learning is just you know immaculate dia macam nak belajar aja and there was a time when um, harry potter uh, baru keluar dia uh, tak habis baca i mean her great level of reading is 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 minimal tapi punyalah punyalah confidence sebab kawan-kawan dia semua dah mula uh, membaca Harry Potter dia pun nak join that that group so she's asking me to buy um, Harry Potter so that she can talk about the scenes uh, with a friend so how does she do the reading she reads and then she pastor me lah to find yani what does it mean mama what does it mean so i have to teach her about reading but like, imagine just imagine guess make a good guess so through that conversation that i had with her her reading reading uh apa ni level uh went to a trajectory from level 1 dia terus jump ke level 4 uh, because of her motivation uh, to learn so that's where when you know your students are passive don't just accept them as passive there must be something that we can do in order to change them from being passive to become confident from shy uh you know uh, from passive to become active shy to become confident and some of you wrote um they are studious yeah actually can if you look at malaysian students they are very very studious they are very very humble and and very nice to teach because they are very quiet tapi at the end of the day when you give them uh, soalan and all that they don't they don't do well because they were too quiet they when they, they when they needed to ask questions they did not ask questions So we don't know whether they they got it right or wrong until we give them the the apa ni final exam questions and then realize that they didn't understand from the very beginning. So diam tu uh, tak boleh kita biarkan. Uh, sebab tu kita nak kena bagi dekat dia um uh, activities yang boleh membantu mereka supaya melalui aktiviti tu orang yang diam tu tak dapat nak duduk diam. Okay, contoh uh, katalah you ajar mathematics um and you want them to solve the problem selama ni you cara you mengajar ialah you yang tolong solvekan problem tu kepada pelajar you tunjuk cara untuk nak solve problem bagus cikgu ni tapi dia tidak membantu pelajar-pelajar dia sebab pelajar-pelajar dia tidak tidak solve the problem pelajar-pelajar menyalin cara guru solve the problem so if you really want your students to solve the problem they need to do it they need to have a go at doing it they need to make all the mistakes that they can possibly do during the class time and then you would be able to ask them questions guide them make them think make them understand through the interaction between their friends um as well as um when they are presenting to you so what while, while you're doing that you are giving them uh you are unpacking their their misconception ke ataupun you're unpacking their punya uh, inability to understand um it, through the activity Uh, so that they are they themselves are clear sebab sekarang kadang dia orang tak tahu nak tanya soalan sebab dia orang tak tahu yang dia orang tak tahu you know they don't know that they don't know so when you provide them the, with the activities uh, that will help them um you know to to um to unpack um all the the, the misconceptions that they have that will help them to be to 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 learn better and and believe me when they are able to see that they can learn that they can solve the problem their motivation will be just you know they shoot up um up in very very well so the quest the all the words that you wrote here except for uum which i saw somewhere uh apart from all the questions that you wrote here um uh questions but apart from all the words that you have uh, written here these are uh, words to show me that not all your students are i mean most of your students are really very quiet the quiet type um and that's where you need to make sure that um through the activities that you create will change them to become um, better learners questions the soalan 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the Southeast Asian values. Correct. Uh, and what we don't want, we don't want them to take the, the Western values where they are kurang ajar. No, we want them to take the good side of those those values where they will question, they will ask question, they will ask why, you know. So that's a different thing altogether. We're not asking our students to become kurang ajar, no. In fact, our, our society are becoming Kuranja, you know, and you look at the way in which they speak in the, in the, in the social media and the drama that you have, uh, in, in the Malay dramas that you have. Those are, those are actually encouraging and, and reinforcing the, the, how shall I say, bahasa kasar yang kita, uh, uh, nampak dekat dalam society kita. That is, that is definitely not our Southeast Asian values, but it has become a Southeast Asian values. So what I'm trying to say here is not not to not to um, to take the good things uh, that the Westerns are actually doing, encouraging our students to become thinkers by um, prodding, yeah, as you said just now. Uh, by asking questions, by allowing them, giving them the opportunity to speak their mind because when they speak their mind, we can actually check whether they are on the right track, do we need to give them the guidance and so on and so forth. Okay, now that you are clear about uh, your students and I've given you some ideas about understanding your, your students, it's not just there, understanding your students also means um how you teach them um you need to uh, how you teach them will be um important and how you want them to use their learning style to show you what they have um, um understood from the lesson is also important all right um coming back to adult learning so um that is the learning style but the, what what basically adult learning or what knows um um, define adult learning is it's the art and science of helping adults to learn and we know already who the adults are um, um, as, as I mentioned I mentioned just now they come in with a lot of experience they have accumulated a lot of resources if they are 18 years old they've got 18 years of experience 40 years old 40 years of experiences and yang tu tak mention lagi kadang-kadang umur 18 tahun tapi mungkin you nak ajar dekat dia tentang finance hmm, apa tu personal fin financial financial accounting apa ke? perhaps they have been doing um, business selling helping their mother to sell nasi lemak ke apa ke? at the age of 8 so 10 years of experiences in 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 doing business so you stuck at you nak mengajar dekat dia cara nak nak timbang kat, apa timbang kati pula uh, timbang duga and all that it's not going to be that difficult Autonomy. So, what you want them from them is not to become uh, not to become dependent to you, but to become independent. Independent in solving problem. Independent. Independent in 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 making decisions. So that's why in your classroom you have to give them that opportunity for them to be able to do that to to show you what they they are capable of thinking, what they are capable of solving, and what kind of solutions that they can they can come up with. And when you are able to to see and 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 enjoy learning from your students and and seeing that your students grow, you will also portray that through your interaction, through your expectation, and that will give them the motivation. Sebab tu kalau you tengok pelajar pelajar you yang buat postgraduate, uh, kebanyakan pelajar pelajar tu dia cara mereka belajar berbeza dengan masa mereka belajar undergraduate. You all pun lah sama uh, pesara pesara ni pun sama. Masa you mengajar belajar dekat undergraduate, you pergi mungkin lah pergi ke universiti sebab orang lain semua pergi universiti. So you just you just go with the flow. But when you're doing your postgraduate, you you become a person who really wants to know why. Eh? Kenapa? Eh? Uh, your, your, the way you ask questions in the classroom would be different compared to the way to the time in which when you were undergraduate. Sebab apa? Sebab the motivation berbeza. Jadi sebab tu kita kena make clear to our students what are their motivation to learn, what are their values, what are their goals, so that when they are clear about all their you know the values and the goals and their expectation. This will change the way in which they, they learn. Lah.
So what's the difference between pedagogy and andragogy? So pedagogy is the art and science of educating. The, um, it relates to a lot of instructional methods where the teacher is actually guiding them. Whereas andragogy is the art and science of teaching adults where um, what is more crucial is um, getting them to be involved in, in their own learning processes. Um, but unfortunately, uh, as Fry and Catridge and Marshall says, many lecturers know how they learn best, but not necessarily consider how their students learn. And if the way they teach is predicated on enabling learning to happen. Maksud dia dekat sini, kadang-kadang kita tak tahu. Kita tak tahu uh, cara nak mengajar, kita selalu refer kepada cara kita belajar. Dan cara kita belajar, kalau kita datang daripada generation yang berbeza, mungkin berbeza cara saya belajar dengan cara generation Y belajar dan cara generation Z belajar mungkin berbeza. So, kalau saya refer kepada cara saya belajar, then that's where the generation gap in, in terms of learning and teaching will continue to happen. That's the reason why my that, that little activity that you do about searching the different types of learning activities Activities will help you to gauge a little bit about where your students come from. But I'm sure good lecturers, they will have some form of um, data, much, um, gathering data about their students, you know, like where, what, what courses they have learned, um, uh, what grades did they have, what, what understanding do they have about this, you know, that like you will do some form of test, uh, prerequisite test um, before you actually t start your class so that you will know how to teach not how to teach, how to help the different types of students in the classroom. Yeah, I'm not going to go through all this, but I'm just going to focus on what Paulo Freire says about banking, about memorization. Uh, if you're thinking banking or memorization is good, it's good to a certain extent, but it's not good full stop. You have to use um, banking education must also be included or be supported by problem posing education. Then only your students become knowledgeable as well as critical thinkers. Kalau tidak dia jadi knowledgeable as in boleh hafal but not necessarily knowledgeable in terms of uh, untuk selesaikan masalah. So what the adult learning in a tertiary context that you have to take into consideration is their prior experiences, the way in which they interact. So you know now the way they prefer to interact through the, the, the online, you know, through the online rather than face-to-face. -face. So what you can do is use that, use that that channel as well as the face-to-face -face because you, you still need to teach them about how to interact face-to-face, -face, but use also the online channel in order for them to show you what they understand. And finally, for them to do reflection. That means reflecting their processes of learning is important compared to just the product. So blending all this will create the, the effect um, of, of good synergistic um, learning that you will have in your classroom. So as, a, as an instructor, you must also continuously ask, how can I, as an instructor, create adult learning experiences for my, for my learners? And um, to elaborate more, uh, Malcolm Knowles, when he says the art and science of teaching adult learning, what he actually say is that adults, they learn better when they, they know they need to know. So adults learn better when they know why they need to know. So kalau katalah you mengajar bi marine biology and you teach them just the 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 the, the fundamentals and the, the crux of the matter without telling them why they should learn, they cannot see the the end in mind. So they they only see the bit the little pieces. So they, they cannot make in the make the, an idea. But through projects, selalunya bila kita buat katalah community engagement ke apa ke they will be able to see how the theory that they are learning is applied in the context of real world, real world setting. That is where they become reflective in their learning processes. So the adults learn better when they, they know that they need to know. Ah, maksudnya, dia tahu, dia perlu faham. Ah, baru dia akan belajar dengan lebih baik. Self-concept. When treated as someone who is capable and self-directed. Sebab tu cara kita nak mengajar, kita kena gradually ajar pelajar-pelajar kita untuk nak menjadi autonomous. Uh, gradually ajar pelajar-pelajar kita daripada menjadi pasif kepada menjadi aktif. Gradually ajar pelajar-pelajar kita daripada menjadi shy kepada confident. So once adults become autonomous, 
you can stop teaching but they cannot stop learning they become motivated autonomous and motivation goes hand in hand so uh, to, uh, for adults to develop autonomy uh, they must be given opportunities to solve problems make decisions even if they they do the wrong decision in the wrong direction through your guidance you will help them to see how they can improve their decision making not just by saying you salah so giving them a score of five over ten is not going to be helpful until and unless you tell them why did you when you were answering this what was it in your mind basically you know so um, by unpacking where they got it wrong that's where you can guide them to 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 answer it correctly or or, or make better decision then the sense of autonomy will be developed Life experiences. Adults have a lot to share and learn better from others during sharing, sharing session. So, if you know that adults like sharing session, then it cannot be one way. Lah. It's got to be where they can also interact with you. You know, uh, apa ni, um, where you can actually um, apa orang kata tu? Um, provide um, guidance. Um, through their uh, and learn from each other you know uh, provide guidance and as well as learn from each other from their prior experiences motivation uh, motivation can come in the form of internal and external external of course lah kalau dia uh, the, the, the kalau dia nak belajar tu nak dapat nak A tapi kalau dia dapat uh, dapat ras the, kalau kita dapat didik dia supaya dia rasa seronok untuk nak belajar then that will be internally internally focused so kalau dia internally focused then it's called intrinsic motivation and the intrinsic motivation is usually lebih kekal lebih lama lah uh, so yang tu ada kena mengena dengan the value the goal and the expectation tadi orientation to learning is got to be life-centered maksudnya the more real world context it is the better the more abstract uh, it can be good but the abstract has got to be related to the uh, concrete as well to the real world so it's got to be problem and task oriented and in which they need the knowledge to encourage the environment. Is somebody asking me a question? No? Is there any question? Can you hear me? Yeah, Prof. Boleh dengar. <laughs> I tak boleh kejap tu, I rasa macam, oh my god, yeah, am I like talking to myself? Kita <laughs> Alright, alright, sebab tadi macam dengar ada somebody nak, cak nak cakap tapi lepas tu tak dengar. Alright, okay, so the next is about uh, ready to learn. You know, ready to learn is like, um, when you provide an activity that, that will encourage them to become ready to learn, you will see um, them being able to... Um, you know, connect whatever that they have learned to their real world context. And and they are more keen to learn when they see the relevance lah, uh, uh, in the in the learning and applicability to the immediate situation. So, tu kalau katalah macam contoh macam uh, dulu, I was teaching them, I, I used to teach my undergraduate students theories in learning and it was just too many theories. They get mixed up one theory and the other. And, and I kata yang ni tak boleh jadi ni sebab lepas je uh, midterm break akan ada midterm exam. So I kata okay, why, uh, during the midterm break I want you to search for somebody, uh, your family members ke, your neighbour ke, your grandmother ke, siapa ke. Try out the theory. Try out the theory that you have learned and see whether it works or not. Keep a diary and every time when you do that particular theory, that, that, that particular experiment, write down what happened. So when in that process of doing it, they were actually uh, some of them, uh, some of them had to read first the theory because dalam kelas tu they were not paying attention. So they had to read first about the theory and then they had to do it with the with the whoever the popular participant too, and then they have to write it down. The process of doing it with the participants, some of them actually realized that oh, theory ni betul eh. Because bila dia nampak teori tu betul, lagi dia nak cari semua-semua teori. I suruh dia buat untuk tiga teori je because those three theories are the most important theories and, and you know, uh, apa ni, that they should know, the fundamental ones. But they were doing all other types of theories too. So this is what I mean by when they can see the relevance of learning, they realize that the theory that you are learn, uh, you you learn is actually applicable to understand how people learn and them as future teachers would need all this understanding 
so they become motivated to learn and they can see themselves better jadi understanding all this um characteristics of adult learning this will help us to design um, our learning and teaching activities as well as our uh, assessment okay yeah and the yang sama je lah macam yang tadi I cakap tu it's just that this is in writing so the, the self-concept of the adult learning is self-directing and autonomous the prior experiences are the richest resources so you need to tap their prior experiences and you can tap them through problem solving, case study, simulation, group discussion, and then um, they they will they will learn better if they they have the need, the urge to know. So the urge to know, the adults need to know the utility or the value of the material that they are learning before embarking on learning. So you need to make them see the relevance. So the first task of a teacher is to help the teachers, the learners, to become aware of the need to know. And adult learners tend to become ready to learn things they believe they need to know or be able to do in order to cope effectively with real life situations and problems. So bila macam tadi I bagi contoh tu yang macam mana dia guna teori tu untuk nak 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 belajar atau nak faham tentang orang di sekeliling dia, bila dia nampak baru dia dia rasa macam teruja untuk belajar lagi. So they tend to be less subject centered than children. They are increasingly problem centered. So role of teacher is to facilitate and to assist the adult learners to learn. So the basic principles ada lima. Nombor satu ialah orientation yang kita dah tahu dah sekarang ni. I'm repeating myself. Adult learners are self-directed and they are autonomous. Adults already have some knowledge and experiences. Adults are ready to learn relevant tasks if it's if they see the utility and they see the value. And adults learners are motivated to learn and they learn better if it's intrinsically motivated. And adults expect to apply learning immediately uh, where it is problem-centered. So this is the basic principles and if you if you know that you are going to to do those 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 basic principles you can actually design already your task. Um and this is a uh, this is not really about adult learning but when when you talk about processes of learning chances are uh, dia akan sabit dengan experiential learning lah. So experiential learning uh, also talks about processes uh, rather than the product. So it's it's more about the learning process that they go through. Um, and you, they might go through the process of relearning uh, apart from relearning. They, um, in, 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 in a task where they share uh, or they challenge each other, there will be resolutions of conflicts. And this is, this is rich in terms of making them become clearer about what they need to know. Uh, adaptation to the real world, adaptation to um, the person and the environment where they can actually relate to the theory to practice, so person to the environment. And of course, uh, when they do something, in the especially when you, they do it in a prospective orientation, uh, it is a process for them to create knowledge. So they co-construct co knowledge, they construct knowledge, and they can also create knowledge. So placing this um, um, outcomes-based education in the digital way, I mean, especially when you're talking about learning in a, teaching and learning in the context of online like now, um, outcomes is still relevant because that's the demands of the 21st century. We must move away from the lecture to the student-centered approaches, moving away from transmitting to transforming. And um, because of education IR 4.0 and all in the industrial revolution and all that, so um, you have to be alert lah, uh, and, and make sure that you are also into it in terms of immersive learning interactive lecture and 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 on especially immersive learning so that you will know how to get to to, to develop the kind of activities that will help them to become immersed uh, so usually those activities will be problem based lah. um and of course you have to make sure that you follow the standards and the quality assurance and and by doing that hopefully students when students become thinkers they will they will solve their employability issues they will not just wait at home uh, for people to give them the job they know what to do and they know how to how to influence other people uh, in terms of the job um, focusing on students learning and thinking is crucial and and remember as an adult students also co construct uh, their their knowledge and they they do uh, meaning making when they solve real world problems. 
So the, the most important thing is for you to understand about constructive alignment, where the outcome is, um, understanding your syllabus is where the outcome is, getting your students to, I mean, understanding your students in terms of them as an adult learner and the basic principles of adult learning is also crucial for you to be able to solve, to be able to design the activities as well as uh, the assessment. And this is just what I said uh, in an infographic manner. Because, why I say until assessment? Because the students will be very concerned about assessment. The teachers will be concerned about the outcome. But if the students, if the outcome and the assessment gel together, then when the students do the assessment, they are actually achieving the outcome. And you can actually use a lot of these interactive tools as well as electronic devices in order to fulfill that, 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 that outcome. And of course, when you're doing, when you are focusing on the outcomes-based education, what we want is to cre create intellectual beings uh, who have values, you know. So if they, they speak with bad languages, you have to guide them. Uh, don't wait until the BM teacher in Kursus, uh, in the Pusat Pengajian Sebelah to, to do it. Uh, when it happens to you, you have to help. Um, to guide the students and, and improve them th their skills and so that they become contributing citizens. And I think I've mentioned this again and again. So in order for you to design those learning activities, what we have done today is to understand the learners. So uh, understanding the syllabus is important where you will know what the outcome is, understanding the skills that you want them to, to gather. Uh, it's through that is where you will um, gain those activities and those contacts in which you can you can help the students to do those activities and understanding those learners will help you to um, create uh, adults who are um, autonomous. So um, coming back to the basic principles of adult learning, as I mentioned this now, um, the five orientation or sorry, five orientation, like five basic principles can be used when you are planning your um, activities. So I'm going to give you an example. This is a case of two classes. Uh, one UG class is on Islamic marketing and the other one is a postgraduate class on social culture theory and learning. So for undergraduate Islamic marketing, uh, during the pandemic, there was no way for the um, lecturer to meet the students. But this particular course was designed in such a manner that there will be embedded, I mean, uh, the high impact practices will be embedded in it. And the, the high impact uh, practices was service learning, or now it's called SULAM, but basically it's service learning. So sh the, the instructor could not sp um, see the students or do the project together like they used to. Uh, now they have to use online. Um, so they had to use Web 2.0 tools uh, to break that social barriers. Um, before this, um, part of her problem with her students because they they come from uh, Islamic schools, so chances are the, the the male and the female don't really talk to each other. But they have to when they were asked to sit in groups, they had to do the project together. They had problems even to speak to each other, and the skill that she wanted uh to teach for this particular course was about. Uh, interpersonal skills, you know, where you have to communicate with each other, communication and interpersonal skills. So, um, they, they, uh, so in order for, for, for her to do that, even though they were at their respective homes during the pandemic, um, she uses Flipgrid uh, and Padlet uh, in, uh, for them to video record themselves, introduce themselves, and then um, through the, when she had the classes, they had breakout sessions where they can discuss and all that. So collaborative learning was actually done, but via online. Um, so she was actually doing service learning. When she was doing service learning, basically what, what service learning has to offer is that it encourages the learners to share their experiences about, about the context. And um, when the learners decide on what they need to do, they, they are actually being expose or encourage to become autonomous and when they are able to see see applicability means what is applicability 
what is applicability? Applicability is adults expect to apply learning immediately where they do problem centered. So when they were doing student centered, uh, when they were doing service learning, they were actually trying to solve the problem of the community, right? So that's applicability. So <clears throat> the students through service learning as an activity were already doing all those things that actually harness them as an adult. So like they feel teruja lah sebab they are already adult learners capable of doing all the adult learning uh, apa ni, apa? Um, things and through those activities they were able to unleash their potential uh, and through those projects when they understand their role to educate the community it gives them the motivation to learn more about the program because before this they were just going through the program just like everyone else memorizing um, theories or whatever, <clears throat> going with the flow. But now they see the the program with a purpose. You know, they they see they see something with a purpose. Oh, I forgot to tell you, the service learning was about halal and taiban. So when they realize that, um, you know, um, the concept of halal and taiban to put in Islamic marketing is 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 not really crucially understood by the society by the community. Uh, so they were, they felt that they have a role to play as a graduate from this particular program. They 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 felt that um, they have a role to play. So their motivation becomes clearer. They see the relevance of learning uh, through those the, that 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 particular activity. They gain new experiences when they communicate with the with the community and solve problems that that the community did not know how to solve, but they were already solving it with the community. And getting the community to become to become sustainable and all that, so it it boosted them, boosted their motivation, and and they gained their new experiences. In terms of orientation, it helps them to become more autonomous in their own learning perspective. The postgraduate course is called Social Culture Theory and Learning, uh, where um, this was about this particular theory, which is a very difficult theory. So. How to make that theory become something that is manageable for them to understand? A uh, movie was actually used so that you know when it, when you talk about movie, people tend to feel, oh, I can do movie, but I cannot do social culture theory. So how do I connect social culture theory into the movie? So uh, putting that move, uh, get, getting the students to watch the movie, making them uh, identify instances where. Um, parts of uh, opening the, the the social culture theory is actually happening uh, to make sense of the learning theory basically. So when they become when they are able to do that because they they use the, the the movie as the stimulus for discussion, and they are able to talk to each other um, and 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 share their views about which part that was related to the theory. So the more the more everybody shared, the 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 the, the, the more expanded it becomes, they gain more experience and it, they can see the relevance of the theory then. And then they uh, that was just like much um a prerequisite. The next step was to do mini project where they actually embark on a little project using the theory in order to understand how their students learn. So that's how they see the relevance of the theory. They see the orientation where they take autonomy. They, they, they become independent in solving the problem, in making the decision when to when and how to collect the data with our guidance. And they can see the applicability of the, the theory into practice. And when they understand their role to make difference to their students' learning, they realize that selama 20 tahun, ada yang 20 tahun, eh? <coughs> dah, belak, dah mengajar. And selama 20 tahun tu mengajar, pelajar-pelajar uh, dia untuk menghafal barulah dia realize after taking the course that cara dia tu uh, tidak uh, is it can be improved so that's where um, she's already thinking about how to um, create activities in order for them to they can menghafal but they menghafal dengan cara bermakna so that was the new experience for the teachers and they become more motivated so that's why in a nutshell um understanding your learners that they are adult learners that they have the capacity to learn and uh, that it is uh, understanding how they learn would help you to now design your teaching and learning activities in order for them to unleash their potential 
uh, in order to help them see the relevance in order to help them see that they they can make they can learn and they can make a difference and they can they are a country a, a, a a very positive contributing citizen that can help the community or help the people around them that in in itself will give them the experience and the confidence to become uh, autonomous self-directed learner um, in order to achieve their potential with that ladies and gentlemen uh, i stop for question and answer uh, thank you for your participation. So, if you have any questions, because I've I've come to an end. Masa tadi yang I bagi kata penutup tu, uh, dengar tak? Dengar, dengar. Baru je, Prof. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, kita buka pada sesi soal jawab. Jika ada soalan untuk hadirin bertanyakan kepada uh, Prof. Fauzia, boleh unmute dan majukan soalan. Atau boleh juga kalau nak tulis di ruangan chat, Ada soalan from uh, the audience? Prof, saya nak tanyalah, saya curious uh, cara Prof, mungkin Prof boleh kongsikan cara Prof tegur students lah dalam kuliah atau dalam kelas kalau hmm. ada yang tidak uh, memberi perhatian. Contoh ada yang tidur, ada yang saya pernah uh, jumpa students yang baca komik masa kelas. So kalau hmm. macam tu Prof ada tegur atau tegur dengan cara tegas, tegur dengan cara humor ataupun biarkan saja selagi dia tak ganggu orang lain. Kalau pendapat Prof lah. Mm -mm. Thank you very much. Um, I dulu kan, uh, I, I didn't have anyone reading comics lah but I do have people reading their FB. Kan dia pun nanti buka komputer, dia pun orang tengah belajar. Tapi sebenarnya dia tengah uh, tengah duk tengok dia punya FB lah apalah kan. So that's when I realised that I'm, bore, I'm boring to them lah. Betul. You know that means I might have been saying something that's not relevant to them so much so that the FB is more interesting than me. So how am I going to use that FB? Uh, to teach. So that's where I started thinking about activities yang boleh gunakan dia punya handphone. You know? Uh, ataupun dia punya, lap, dia, punya, dia punya laptop. That's when I started um, attending all this um, the web 2.0 tools because masa tu I tak kerti nak guna um, all this apa ni, web 2.0 tools and they were already uh, teaching me about Quizlet lah, Quizzes lah. Quizlet kan macam best untuk dia pun nak, nak, nak ni kan. So every 10 or every 15 minutes after, especially when I'm teaching them about theory, bila nak explain, 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 bila terlampau lama sangat kita explain, orang akan macam, dia tak, dia tak boleh dengar lebih daripada berapa lama kan. So I had to break the the class into 15, into blocks lah. Uh, habis je that particular theory, uh, then I will give them the, the activity. Sama ada aktiviti tu dia nak kena buat dengan majung paper ke, dia nak buat dekat, dengan quizlet ke. So masa dia buat dengan quizlet, I find it very interesting because they were using Hari tu I'm just sakit hati sebab macam Oh you tengok komputer tunjuk macam nampak macam ambil nota lah konon Tapi sebenarnya tengah tengok FB kan Sebab uh, kebetulan saya berjalan kot belakang dia tak perasan Sebab dia dah immerse dalam FB dia So dia tak perasan yang I dah nampak dia pun tengah FB But I didn't go But I knew there was something wrong with me lah That means uh, In order for them to do the FB means they have all the time in the world To be, to be digress so how do I make sure that my class got no time to digress? Mm. Ha, so uh, dia lah yang bagi kat I idea about chunking my my lesson tu bila uh, apa ni bagi bagi uh, apa ni uh, lecture chunk activity. So masa dia pun buat activity tu mana you dan nak nak tengok FB. Betul. So towards the end of the class um, when I ask them so how is my class? Uh, surprisingly, the person who actually think of FB today kata, oh, your class ni is so engaging, I don't have time to do anything else. Uh, so, masa tu, like, I, I humorously said to him, oh, tak ada masa nak tengok FB eh. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> so macam, so dia macam terkejut, dia kata macam, oh, you know, uh, you know, like, uh, I know, yeah, but I'm not going to tell you, you know, it's like something uh, bad ke, because you are telling, you are also giving me some feedback that I, it was just too long for me to speak. I got to make. Uh, I got to give you a avenue for you to tell me what you think. You know. So from that day onwards, lah. I, I susah nak marah dekat orang 
bila dia perbaca dekat dalam tu sebab I selalu rasa macam hmm kalau dia ada masa untuk nak buat benda-benda ni maksudnya something is not right. I know we've got to do something about it. Hmm. Yeah, for that's from that time onwards lah dia selalu macam nak kena ada aktiviti-aktiviti tapi there are times yang I rasa macam I pun penat I don't have time for activities hmm. but because uh, dia macam uh, cerita uh, gajah yang kena ikat dengan kaki tau uh, kan bila you dah selalu ikat kaki tu bila you tak you dah lepaskan dia punya tali pun dia tak boleh pergi mana-mana kan hmm. so there are times when my students although I didn't do any activities but they were already like macam Ah, lepas ni ada kot, lepas ni ada kot, lepas ni ada kot okay. So they were already in the in the waiting mode Menunggu, menunggu-nunggu Menunggu-menunggu, uh, menunggu-nunggu Until the end baru dia kata, eh hari ni tak ada ya Apa ni uh, uh, tugasan Dan uh, I kata sorry, I kenalah uh, motivation Dia kena hari ni ada, esok tak ada uh, Besok you will look forward again <laughs> Sebenarnya hari tu I memang tak ada nak buat apa-apa dah uh, Penuh dengan meeting, 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 meeting Tak ada nak, nak, nak apa, nak, nak uh, buat the proper activity So those, those are the kind of things lah Apa cadangan untuk kelas komunikasi especially online Sangat susah untuk engage pelajar bercakap Bagaimana untuk menjadikan kelas lebih kesan menggunakan tools Dan cadangan tools yang menarik dan sesuai Okay uh, if it's communication, Ya Allah, Ya Tuhanku, banyaknya benda yang you boleh buat You boleh suruh mereka, I don't know what kind of communication this is Katalah, uh, hari ni you nak suruh mereka ni jadi wartawan Where they have to interview people, interview mereka punya kawan-kawan yang pretend uh, jadi apa-apa ke And they will show mereka punya video recording and so everyone else can actually give them a mark ke apa-apa-apa ke Yang tu, yang tu nak jadi jadi wartawan punya communication The, the other types of communication is as a Mungkin dalam dalam apa, dalam meeting ke apa ke So you can actually ask them to role play the session Where where you do the the meeting Memanglah nampak macam pelik uh, Nak buat uh, role play tu sebab nampak muka Macam kalau dalam dalam situasi Di mana kita dapat bertemu dengan pelajar-pelajar Kita kita boleh buat setting Major tu in such a manner that They look as if betul-betul di tengah meeting Tapi you also have to understand Konteks pekerjaan dunia sekarang ni pun Dia dah Dia dah berbeza You know a meeting is also conducted like this uh, in online so um doing uh, online um role playing the communic- the meeting session online um is also um uh, apa ni um possible oh if it's intercultural communication lagi lah best sebab dia akan you can tell them depa ni depa dekat negara mana culture dia macam mana they have to decide on what will be the culture they will have to have a little activities depending on the culture of that community um, that they can bring into the classroom, you know, so, or you can actually have an e-seminar of intercultural uh, cuisine, ke apa ke? so they can actually have a video recording of how certain cuisine is actually done, but they are actually talking lah about how to, to, to prepare how to prepare no lah, apa tu? Mm. ICT contoh uh, another person yang from probably from China will pre- prepare how to prepare uh, the mooncake ke apa ke I don't know um, I have got to learn about intercultural in order for me to understand so that's just one context where you talk about food which everybody loves semua orang suka and everybody would want to try so they will say oh if only we could see each other then we could actually eat from each other's uh, apa ni you know uh, semua orang punya masakan and all that and it's and it's usually kalau nak cakap pasal intercultural ni it's through the language and the food is where the budaya comes in you know so it, from the language itself and the food that comes that it ties well with the culture of that society so language is where communication is um, food is the context um so if you're talking about tools you can either do flip grid macam saya kata tadi ataupun depa buat youtube they can share everybody can like um or they can uh, just do a demo macam ni lah sekarang ni they they demo lah just as if like i'm going to demo in front of everybody and you all become the the apa the the Huh? Master Chef Intercultural Contoh lah kalau you nak buat kan uh, Something like that Okay, one question is about uh, Student turning on their camera during class 
Um, I did not ask my students to turn on the camera throughout because I understand they are not just taking my course, they are also taking other people's courses and they have data that maybe they per bayar ke apa ke. Unless they are in the in the university, then then I will expect them to switch on the camera. But if they are at home, uh, chances are I will not ask them to switch on the camera. But uh, from time to time, I will say, can you all switch on the camera? I need to take a picture of you. <laughs> Masa tu, I kind of, I kind of know lah siapa yang memang tak ada kat depan kamera tu. Or sometimes I will also give them some work that, that they need to do. Uh, uh, you know, where, where in order for them to speak, they have to, to switch on their camera. So, I wouldn't want them to switch on the camera throughout the class. But there will be certain times, uh, at any point of time, that I will expect them to turn on when I want them, when, when I want them to do. Faham tak? Uh, unless if I am teaching undergraduate now, which I'm not, if I'm teaching undergraduate now and I know my undergraduate students are on campus and on campus the Wi-Fi is free by the university, I will expect them to switch on their camera. Because yang tu dia tak terikat kepada dia nak bayar data dan sebagainya. But I explain lah to them. I akan kata, okay, you all ni semua dah dekat dalam campus kan? Okay, so sekarang ni uh, data you all tak bayar dah kan? Okay, boleh tak you all switch on the camera? So kalau dia pun bagitahu dekat I, uh, uh, tak boleh sebab kami duduk dekat sini, dia tak tak best wifi dia. Okay, boleh tak bagitahu dekat saya kat mana tempat yang you duduk ni sebab I nak bagitahu dekat pengarah UMIT. So kalau dalam campus pun you tak boleh bagi a good... Uh, a good uh, apa uh, data macam ni jangan ceritalah pasal the new norm ha, macam tu lah <laughs> uh, tapi memang lepas tu I kena cakap dengan pengarah UMIT lah uh, my students dekat sekian-sekian tempat tak boleh dapat can you do something about it ada soalan lagi untuk Prof ok so Alhamdulillah kita telah mendengar perkongsian dari Prof Fauzia uh, sebentar tadi terima kasih Prof atas perkongsian yang amat uh, bermanfaat jika boleh saya rumuskan di sini, uh, of course uh, pasti ada perbezaan antara <coughs> pedagogi dengan andragogi lah yang kita dah tahu kan pedagogi lebih kepada uh, student sekolah, pelajar sekolah dan andragogi lebih kepada adat selena lah termasuk pelajar yang kita deal sekarang lah kita ada pelajar undergraduate, uh, even postgraduate also ok juga kita kena deal dengan ataupun know how to approach student of different generation macam yang Prof cakap tadi daripada generation uh, sekarang Y lah, Y dan Z, uh, Z kan, uh, Z lah yang kita deal sekarang dan ada penting juga untuk kita memahami cara pelaksanaan pendidikan yang melibatkan adult selena ataupun early adult food uh, kerana ianya melibatkan para pelajar yang kita deal sekarang ni sama ada pelajar undergraduate ataupun pelajar postgrad eh. Semoga apa yang dikongsikan oleh uh, Prof Fauzia pada hari ini dapat kita jadikan panduan untuk kita terus berikan yang terbaik untuk universiti kita yang tercinta ni lah, PMT ya dan jutaan terima kasih tak terhingga juga kepada semua rakan-rakan pensyarah akademisyen yang mengikuti latihan ini dari awal hingga ke penghujung latihan dan mungkin juga ada daripada universiti-universiti lain yang mungkin saya ada nama yang uh, tak familiar mungkin daripada uh, institusi, institusi lain lah. Saya mohon semua hadirin yang hadir untuk onkan kamera masing-masing um, untuk kita bergambar kenang-kenangan bersama Prof Fauzia. Boleh on kamera ya? So saya juga ingin mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih lah kepada semua. Uh, oh, you, you, ada juga orang kat belakang kan? Belakang, belakang tu ya. Yeah. So people are actually listening although they're very quiet. So minta maaf lah kalau ada apa-apa ter, tersilap dari pihak saya juga dan saya uh, juga mendoakan yang terbaik daripada tuan-tuan dan perempuan semua. Terima kasih sebanyak-banyak. Terima kasih kepada uh, Prof. Ya, sekali lagi. Uh, atas jemputan dan memang perkongsian sangat bermanfaat lah untuk kami uh, Saya akhiri majlis kita dengan bacaan uh, Tasbih Kafarah dan Surah Al-As Pabla'i Taufiq wal Hidayah Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Terima kasih dan insyaAllah jumpa lagi